Here it is, day number one. We start by being flown into our new home by a giant bird in the middle of a thunderstorm. This will now and forever be referred to as the Rain Boss. After being gracefully dropped off, the day began as any first day would. Collect stick, watch recipe, talk to bird. <laughs> I'm sure he won't cause any problems. It took me a couple of minutes to remember that instead of mindlessly swinging at this shack, I could just make a crafting bench and destroy it. While Yale went out getting flint, I spent half the day rebuilding a structure. That I ended up tearing down later that day. And to round off day one, after roughly 19 minutes, Yale took what would be the first of many deaths in our hundred days. Day number two began bright and early with the completion of a cozy little shack. It may not be much, but it's home. And we were immediately assaulted on both sides by an army of Grey Dwarfs. After walking in a corner for a while, the Grey Dwarfs got bored and decided to leave us alone. You see, the difference between most games and Valheim, the early game is painfully slow. You have no resources, even basic mobs are terrifying, and all of your tools do, like, no damage. So we spent the day cutting down as many trees as our poor little axes could handle, told the locals to fuck off, and headed to bed. Oh yeah, and Ekthir decided to order a ground assault on our location. So on day three, we decided to take the fight to him. Also, I don't know if you feel this way, but it seems like the bosses in this game are actually easier than most basic mobs of their zones. It's like, oh no, big lightning deer, but at the same time, I can just sit here and run around in circles and take zero damage while my buddy sits behind me and shoots him. And sure, you could make the argument that I should just sit out in the open and take the hits and dodge mechanics like a normal human being, but why do that when I have rock? So with Ektir dead and his head mounted to the sacrificial stone, we decide to take the rest of the day off. Day number four, and it's off to mine. Using our brand new pickaxes, we were able to collect a nice hull of copper ore, but quickly realized that we needed some sirtling cores to smelt it. After taking 10 minutes to build a bridge across the stream that would have taken us 10 seconds to swim across, we were able to find a burial chamber, where absolutely no deaths occurred. Thankfully, the rest of the rooms in the burial chambers only had one to two skeletons in them, which made it a breeze to get through. At the end, we were greeted with our prize of... seven certainly cores. For those of you who don't understand why this would be a slight inconvenience, both the charcoal kiln and the smelter require five sirtling cores, which means we'll have to make the kiln, burn enough wood for coal to smelt all of our copper, break it, and then place the smelter. Also, I think this skeleton was a little irritated that we were cheesing his buddies in the entrance, because he was stuck in a wall shooting at us. Day five, we got started on the smelting process and went out to grab some tin. Day 6, more smelting and general resource collection. Day 7, we dove into another burial chamber for some more sirtling cores. Day 8, and it's more smelting. Sometimes it's nice to stay at home. Day 9, and we were already preparing to fight the Elder. We got some ancient seeds, crafted some armor, and made some fire arrows. Day 10, and we were off running towards the Elder. On our way, we made some stops to mark some copper deposits. Not even a minute after arriving, I managed to die which was bad enough on its own, but I'd also forgotten to grab the ancient seed from the house on the first run, and the second run, and since I'd only remembered once I'd gotten back, I was going to have to make the run a third time. So on day 11, that's what I did. Except first we got ambushed by a fucking troll. The troll aggroed. After digging himself into his own grave, I was finally off to get our last ancient seed. Since the run there and back takes over 10 minutes, we started the Elder fight going into nighttime. Okay, ready, whatever. One more shot. Go. Yeah, we cheesed it again. Can't say I'm proud, but it does get the job done. Since we decided to fight the Elder going into nighttime, our run back was also during the nighttime. This That's probably wasn't the smartest That's a idea. That's a Let's keep running. Uh -oh. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm at 8 health, I'm at 6 health, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die! Did you die? Yes, I f***ing died! Day 12 and we were still trying to get home. Oh my god. Kinda seemed like everything just wanted to make sure we stayed away from home as long as possible. For 
And even once we got home, we still weren't done fighting. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's a raid! It's a raid! It's a raid! Which oh raid? Which raid? It, it's a troll! It's a troll! It's a troll! It's a troll! I forgot to record day 13 and most of day 14, but those days were primarily spent getting materials to get a boat and get out on the water. Also, this happened. Ocean! There's the ocean. Oh, there's puffer fish? If I eat that, am I, am I gonna go insane? In the membrane? Oh, oh for fuck's fuck? sake! Fortunately for us, he decided to kind of just sit there and let us shoot him from the shoreline. Day 15 was spent boating. Remember those copper nodes we marked on the way to the Elder? We were trying to boat our way around to them, so we didn't have to run back and forth with all the copper. Unfortunately, there was a lot of land between us and that copper. Day 16, we fought a troll and went out to get some more locally sourced copper. Day 17, we were getting things together to get ready to move our house. And later that night, we set sail. Now, Yale, remember how last time we didn't go inland there because we, you know, it would have just taken a bunch of extra time, we'd have been out of wind and all, and you hit a fucking rock, congratulations. Yeah, we're gonna do this again and not get hit by a sea serpent. Uh, okay, we just too. went into the ocean. Literally, as soon as we went into the ocean, the motherfucker spawned. Yeah, that was hilarious. That was pretty funny. Yeah, that's your your definition of hilarious and mine are different. Also, look how dark the sky is over there. That does not look fun. It's raining. Uh, hey, Yale, yeah, look at my screen. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it's Time to go inland. Unfortunately, he decided not to stick around. Day 18, and it's time to build a new home. I was able to get the foundation done in a little corner, but not much else. Day 19, and our new house is complete. It comes fit with twice as many chests and almost three times as much room. Day 20 was spent traveling back and forth from the old home to our new home to get some more materials. Just a bit of decoration, day 21. And the following day was spent organizing all the stuff we'd brought over. I was going to make a second layer to put all the chests on, but... There wasn't quite enough space. Day 23 and we were off to find a swamp. Preferably one with some crypts in it. No luck there, so it's more sailing day 24. Fortunately, we found one. Unfortunately, we died. Day 25, we began preparing to go back to the swamp. And not willing to be defeated so easily, we headed out to the swamp later that day. But this time we remembered to put down a portal. We arrived on the night of day 25, sat down the portal, and got to mining. Day 26 starts with a quick reprieve, and then it's straight back to mining. Since a bulk of days 27 through 31 were just the same routine of mine ore, die, drop off ore, and die again, I figure now would be the best time to talk about why we hate the swamp so much. Permanent rain debuff. Droggers that swing literal hand grenades. Blobs. Oozers. The fact that 80% of the terrain is water. And apparently being able to die in loading screens. But in all seriousness, this biome is insane. It is infinitely harder than the previous biome, while still being harder than the biome that follows it. And sure, there are some measures that can be taken to make it a little easier on yourself, but those measures are even annoying to take in a normal playthrough, let alone 100 days where you're pressed for time to try to complete as much of the game as possible. Day 32 and we are finally headed home with our massive iron stash in tow. Day 33 and we decide to visit the trader. On our adventure to find a suitable swamp, we managed to pick up a trader ping. We decided to stop by real quick to pick up a Meganyord. And to round off day 33, Bonemass wanted some payback for what had happened in the swamps. Day 34, we took some time off to stay at home and smelt all of our ores. It sure does feel good to be home. Day 35, I decided to explore our island some. Bought a troll and found his lair. Mined some tin, made some map markers, died, and found a burial chamber to explore. We spent day 36 smelting and upgrading our workstations. Day 37 and we finally built the longship, an aptly named boat with 18 storage spaces. We immediately used it to set sail to, you guessed it, the swamp. Day 38 and it's more crypt exploring. At least by this point we had gotten pretty good at clearing out the crypts. Day 39 and... Wait, how much more of this do we have left to do? Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Would you look at that, day 40 and we're finally leaving the swamp! Please tell me we don't have to go back there anytime soon. Day 41 consisted mostly of us getting copper and some sailing. Since we finally got to the longship, 
I decided now would be a good time to build a dock. So I spent days 42 through 45 building one. It may not be the best dock, but we were short on time, and I'm proud of it. Day 46, and we used some totally legitimate methods to boost up our skills. That we ended up losing immediately. Day 47, and it's time to chop down some trees. We're gonna need a lot of wood to make arrows. I think you can guess where this is going. Same thing, day 48. Day 49, and can you guess what we did? Day 50, and look at that, we're doing something different. Or at least I am. Yo had to get off early, so I spent the day going towards Bone Mass. I also had my first solo encounter with a sea serpent. Thankfully, we went down pretty easily. I finished the rest of the trip to Bone Mass on day 51, and immediately went to work building out our sniper nest. Day 52, and it's time to finally fight Bone Mass. Our strategy was to pretty much sit up here and shoot him from the safety of our sniper nest. Because Bone Mass is resistant to pierce damage, the idea was to use fire arrows to help offset some of that damage reduction. And because we both had different level bows, we just took turns going home to repair. But after about 30 minutes, Impatience got the best of us, and Yale decided to charge head first. This worked because of a nifty little thing called Corpse Run, which, given the proper setup, basically gives you god mode for about 45 seconds. And after roughly two days, the fight was over. You can probably guess what happened on day 54, but we spent most of it sailing home. Day 55, and I decided to do some home improvements. I also came up with probably the stupidest idea of the entire 100 days. I decided to start building a boat ramp. This endeavor continued into day 56. Unfortunately, I didn't quite understand the physics behind it, so this boat ramp ended up not working at all. Terrible ideas aside, it's time for us to take on the mountain biome. We found our first silver deposit pretty quickly. But I've got to say, using the wishbone to find ore is kind of a weird way to do it. Nearby, we found our first frost cave. Because it had been so long since we played, this wasn't in the game the last time we were around. There didn't seem to be much special about the frost caves, but since this is our first time here, we probably missed something. The new day ticked over just as we were coming off the mountain. And since there wasn't much to do, we went back to using totally legitimate strategies to level up some of our skills while we waited for our ore to smelt. Day 59 and... Why are we back here? Okay, so it turns out we were just here to kill some leeches to get some blood bags so we can make some frost resist potions. Since it didn't take very long, and because we had to wait for the meads to ferment, we decided now would be a good time to test out the boat ramp. Now like I said, it doesn't work. And at first I didn't understand why, but now I kind of get the point, and uh, I'm not doing this. It's long overdue, but day 60 we're going to head to the spawn so we can set up a portal. You remember how we killed Bone Mass like 8 days ago? Well, we still hadn't mounted his head to the altar. And since Bone Mass's power is so useful, we decided we would make a day trip. That way in the future we'll have a portal so we can just teleport over and put heads on the altars. Day 61 and we're back on the mountain in search of some more silver. Yeah, we're still up here. It's gonna be like this for a while. But today we decided to spice it up by fighting a stone golem. They aren't necessarily hard to kill, just really annoying. And their drops? Well, they kind of suck. Back off the mountain, today's going to be a pretty easy day. I'm just kidding. Got to get as much of that sweet, sweet silver as we can. Unlike the last couple of days, day 64 was actually pretty peaceful. We spent the day deforesting the world just like Mother Nature intended. We had to head back up to the mountain on day 65. First because we needed more silver, but also because we needed some Drake trophies. Despite having killed dozens of Drakes by this point, we hadn't seen a single Drake Trophy drop, and two of them are needed to craft a new helmet. We got over to our silver vein, and were ready to mine, but the mountains had a different idea for us. Oh, we're being hunted. Oh. This is the this is the thing I was talking about. Pop your, pop your, pop your... I know, I know, I know. Yes! Holy shit! Holy shit! That's a lot of wolves! Yeah, but this oh is what we You don't do any damage to me! So we might have gotten a little cocky. Our only objective was to get our stuff off the mountain and get back home as fast as possible. This actually turned out to not be as bad as we thought it would. We got some more silver, killed some more drakes, and got the hell out of dodge. We decided we had had enough excitement for a couple of days. 
And since it was long overdue, we decided to start building a house. A proper, no expenses barred house. This process took us to about day 76, and while it might not be fully complete, it's enough to get us started for now, because we have a lot more work to do. Also, somewhere around day 74, we managed to capture a two-star boar. Back onto day 76, and we have our two-star boar tamed, and another one-star captured. Hey, you remember those shitty walls I built to protect our boars? Well, those were about to come back to bite us in the ass. Fortunately for us, none of the boars died. At least this time around. The rest of the day went pretty smoothly. Most of it was just reorganizing chests and moving things from the old base. Day 78 was extremely boring. We spent the entire day, and I mean the entire day, on the boat heading towards motor. Like, this footage is sped up at least 1500% and we're still not there. We arrived just before the dawn of day 79. We set up our portal and headed home to go to sleep. Once we got back, we began the difficult task of scaling this gigantic mountain. Once we got to Motor's Altar, we began digging a small trench. This would be used to house a portal, a chest, and a crafting station. Now I know what you're thinking, but we felt bad about cheesing the first three bosses. So we decided this one was going to be done the right way. What you're seeing right now on day 80 is us getting some feathers so we can make more arrows to get ready for the fight. Day 81 was spent basically doing anything but fighting the dragon. That is, until the very next day when we mustered up the courage to take on the boss. Oh, and it doesn't uh, hit us. Um. This is hard? How the fuck is this hard? Uh, obviously it's not. I just eat that shit and, like, grow, like groceries. Yeah, you can eat it, but damn it hurts. A hundred damage? If what, you don't block it? Yeah. 111. Oh, I don't have my armor on. Am I hitting you? You are fucking trolling. I've been doing how, this how fight you... without my armor on. How'd you not die? What the fuck? I'm like that, brother. So, yeah. We significantly over-exaggerated just how hard this boss was going to be. Like, we went into this boss with thousands of arrows, assuming that it would probably take us that many arrows because we would be shooting most of the time. But that just wasn't the case. Also, I went through almost half of that fight without any armor at all, and it didn't feel difficult without the armor. So, with Motor dead, the only thing to do now was to get the boat back home. Along the way, we stopped to get some barnacles because this was the first time we'd ever seen any. Oh, and we made a quick stop to everyone's favorite biome. Day 84, and we were finally back to the house. Except, ha, psych, you thought you know where we going? You see, unfortunately for me, I enjoy building in this game. And as many of you probably know, iron is one of the key essential building materials if you want to build anything high up or if you want to build anything made out of iron. Such as gates and doors and trap doors and grates, torches, braziers, sconces. You get the gist. Yeah, it's just really useful all around for building. So that's what we did for the next couple of days. We had probably a dozen unexplored crypts in our bone mass biome, so we just went there and started mining. Day 87 can be summed up into one word. <laughs> Finally back home and it's time to get finished with the house. This project is long overdue and now that we've killed Motor, I am confident in wasting a bunch of time building cosmetic things that will never change anything we do in the game. That is, until the game decides to crash and all progress made between now and the last autosave, on day 87, is lost.
Now here's where I would put the second day 88, and the following 9 days. However, being the wonderful creator that I am, I forgot to press the record button. But don't worry, unlike me, you don't need to go through the 5 stages of grief, because I can show you all the progress that was made in those days, right now. For starters, we made a rudimentary garden, and a dedicated area for all of our beehives. Then I spent several days decorating the house, While I was doing this, Yale was working on his... room. And shortly after, I began work on mine. As you might have noticed, the gaps between the walls and the roofs have been filled, and I added on a little balcony for us to sit out and enjoy the sunset. Finally, we made a pig pen. This was more out of anger than anything, because on the days I didn't record, we actually had a bat raid. And that bat raid managed to kill our two-star boar. So, I made this little hut to protect our pigs, and to breed them. It's a pretty crude method, but it gets the job done, and because we were so short on time, I figured this would do for now. On to day 98, the only thing I really cared about was breeding pigs. The following day, we decided to go out and look for some beehives. Seeing as honey was going to become more prevalent as we progressed further through the game, we felt the need to go get some more to prepare for maybe the next 100 days. While we were out exploring, I found another burial chamber and decided to loot it real quick. Nothing too valuable, but you can never have too many Sertling cores. And finally, the end of our journey had come. We were preparing to sit down and watch the sun rise over our land, and reminisce over the memories we'd made. <laughs> Are you f***ing kidding me? Oh god! Oh no! It's slimes! Well that's f***ing ruined. A perfect way to sum up our 100 days. A swamp raid, just when we were about to call it quits. At this point we were pretty well equipped to handle this raid, but unfortunately our pigs weren't. Though we did lose a few, most survived. And the best part? After all things were said and done, you still got to watch our sunrise. If you made it this far into the video, I just want to say thank you. It really does mean a lot. And if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe and leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. My goal is to keep uploading these kinds of videos, and though they take a long time and the process is slow, I would like to keep uploading at a regular interval. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful day.